Okay, so here's the deal. I have been asked literally dozens of times why I don't have a YouTube channel for my investment real estate stuff. I invest a lot, I eat, sleep, and breathe it, I teach it, I love it, but I don't have a YouTube channel. And my answer to that question is, there's a million YouTube channels out there. How does one make themselves stand out, right? What am I gonna do that's any different than what everyone else is doing? Okay, so then here's the second question I get. Drew, you eat, sleep, and breathe paramotoring. You fly every chance that you get. When are you gonna release your paramotoring YouTube channel? And my response is the same. There's a whole lot of people doing some really amazing videos. What would I do that would set myself apart from everybody else? Well, I think I've decided, sorry, I'm driving. I have decided that we're gonna blend the two. Uh, I am going to start taking you guys along with me when I fly on occasion. And we are gonna talk about real estate most of the time. We might talk about other things, a little bit about my gear and, and about flying. Um, but I'm gonna tell you about my deals, how I've done them, how I've made money, how I've lost money. Um, man, and anything that you guys wanna know about. So I'm hoping that you, of course, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, but lots of comments. Let me know what sort of feedback you have. And if there's certain topics you wanna to learn about, um, things you wanna see in these videos, all the feedback that you can provide would be greatly appreciated. Um, we have maybe an hour and a half of flight time, but it'll take me a little while to set up. So I'm almost there. I'm excited to have you come along with. So let's go do it. We have made it out to the field. Um, me and my buddy Ren, you can see him here in the background. Um, I'm at a new field tonight. Um, behind me, you can see it says Gordon Airport. Uh, the Gordon family invited us out. So we're going to get suited up and get in the air, and then we'll start talking real estate. Looks like Jesse's pulling up right now. I've already done most of my pre flight, so I'm just giving it kind of a second look to make sure everything's good. All right, I think we're about ready. There's Ren's stuff. He's about ready to go. Hey, how are you? Nice reach spot, Yeah, man. it's about time. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Yeah. I feel bad, like I'm walking out to rip it. I, like we should socialize or something, but. I'll be here when you come back. All right, all right. All right, that guy's ready. So safety check goes like this. There are 13 points. One, two, three, Four, five on the chin, six, seven, there's eight, there's nine, let's see, this is 10, this is 11, We've got 12, 13, 14, and 15. 15 point safety check. All right. We're gonna fly around a bit, then we'll get some altitude, and then we'll tend to the real estate. How about it?
up and it is beautiful tonight. We, uh, we're flying Columbia City, Indiana, which I've never flown out here before, but man, it is, it is gorgeous out tonight. I'm, I'm really grateful that they let me come out and share the field with them. But um, okay, now that we're up, now that we're flying, let's pivot to real estate. So I've debated, uh, you know, what all do I want to share in these episodes? Do I want to take you through specific examples? Do I want to discuss a topic? Um, and I'll be eager to know from you guys what you want to hear about. So, of course, I hope you drop a like and, and leave some comments about what you'd like to hear, what you'd like to see. Uh, but I wanted to start this first episode with kind of where I came from. Um, everyone gets into real estate kind of for different reasons and from different places. And I got into real estate after sort of a, a catastrophic moment in my life. And, and so I kind of want to share that because it gives perspective on all the rest of my investing. So uh, I'm an Indiana boy, grew up here. I, we moved all over the state, but when I was 13, we landed in Fort Wayne. Um, I was homeschooled. Uh, my sister and I were homeschooled. And so that was a, a good fit because it let me get out of school very early. I started taking college classes um, right before I turned 16. My mama used to drop me off at college. So that was a, a humbling experience. But so I got in early, I got out early. Um, I wound up going to pharmacy school and I got my doctorate from Purdue in, uh, in pharmacy. And that, for the most part, has been a great degree. I graduated in 05. Um, immediately after, I went into residency. Um, I did residency by day and uh, worked on my MBA at night, which is a rough way to, to go about it. That's a lot of work. I wouldn't advise it. Um, I, I was married through the bulk of college. Um, by the time I was in residency, I had two kids and, and you know, life was really good, but it was tough. Okay, we're, we're gonna do a couple of turns here and then I'm gonna get some more altitude. Pretty wing he flies. I love that wing. Okay, so that's that's the basic history up to at least adulthood. Um, you know, the other thing I think that's important to know going into this is um, I, I, I was not raised by a, an entrepreneurial family, uh, not risk takers. Uh, you know, we were raised to study hard and and work hard for everything. Uh, in life and, and earn it, right? Um, so get a good job, it'll take care of you, and, and, and that's not bad advice. Um, I'm very grateful to have good parents and good education, and um, I don't begrudge that at all. But I don't, some people are raised in a family where they start their own businesses, where they make all sorts of investments, and, and that's just not where I came from. So during my year of residency and MBA, I bought my first house. It was not an investment house. This was a house for my family to live in. And the bones were solid. It was in a great neighborhood, but it was uglier than sin. Um, it probably would have been a worth about 115, 120. I got it for 110. Um, and for a first purchase, for a first house, it was great. Um, we worked really hard on it. We updated almost every single room. There was wallpaper in every single room of that house. But the, the end of residency came and the hospital that I was working for, that I was doing my residency at, offered me a leadership position in one of the surrounding counties. So we decided to move so that my commute wouldn't be an hour long. It'd only be about 30 minutes. So when we did that, rather than sell that house to buy our new house, I just chose to rent it. Now, this was a long time ago. I don't remember why I chose to do that. I mean, I, I had dabbled into 
learning about real estate, but um, it just felt like the right thing to do. Unfortunately, I didn't have any mentors or friends doing it or people to teach me about it. Okay, we're gonna practice some wingovers while we talk about this. And these will be little baby wingovers because I can't weight shift with this camera out here on the edge. But it's still a good time. So I kept this house. Um, it cash flowed a little bit, but uh, not much. And you know, if the water heater broke, then all my cash flow was gone. And I didn't know how to screen for tenants. I didn't know the best type of insurance to get. I, I, like I didn't know anything, but it was a good house, good neighborhood. It was a great rental. So I didn't know anything about real estate. That was really my first step into it. And that would have been in 2006. I didn't come back to real estate investing till 2015. So I did nothing other than that one house for nine years. Okay, time to go get some altitude. Okay, so I forget where I left off, but I have this one house, it is now a rental, and I'm a career man. I'm working at pharmacy. I love it. I love my staff. I love the patients. I love leadership at this job. Um, the pay is great. Pharmacy is a good place to be. And, you know, it was a, a six figure salary that supported my family of six at this point. Uh, my wife didn't have to work. She stayed home and took care of the kids, which was a blessing. And so life, life is good, right? Everything's clicking along. Um, I saw myself staying at that job for 10 years, 15. I, you know, maybe 20 or indefinitely. I had no reason to think that I wanted it to change. So the day I thir turned 32, uh, my birthday is September 11th. On 9-11, on the year that I turned 32, I walked into work at 8 a.m., got a call from an administration, wanted me to come down. I said, yeah, no problem, I'll be right there. So I came down and 30 minutes later, security was walking me out. My job ended on the spot and they never told me why. They never told me which policy I violated. They, I, my performance evals were flawless. I never had a verbal warning or a written warning or anything. So, you know, new leadership had come into the hospital at that point. I don't know if Maybe I said something to the wrong person. Maybe I made someone angry. Um, you know, I wish I would have been given the opportunity to learn from whatever mistake I made because I would have tried hard to, to get in line as long as it doesn't compromise my morals or my ethics. But, um, so yeah, my, my job ended. My perfect job and the income and everything I was accustomed to was gone. And I was devastated. Um, mostly because, well, for lots of reasons, but I had so much of my identity wrapped up in this job. You know, this is what I did day in and day out. And in hindsight, uh, I should not have, I've learned not to invest so much of who I am into a job. But, you know, in summary, I had relied heavily on a single source of income just the one job. I had the one rental, but it wasn't really making money. It was self-sustaining, but that's about it. Single source of income and it was gone. And that was terrifying. Okay, I'm gonna get a little more altitude. Hey, there's, his, there's Ren again. you can imagine that moment for me was a pivotal moment I can look back at that moment in 2014 which was six years ago now and so much of where I'm at today what I do today the way I think my mindset everything really points back to that moment 
because I learned several things that day, but the most important was I will never be reliant on a single source of income ever again. I committed to it that day and it's been a radical shift. And that's where real estate started for me. Now, of course, I had to get back to a job right away. So I went back and I reached out to my network and within about a month, I was back to work. I know a lot of people don't have the opportunity to get back to work that quick, but I had a very marketable degree. People knew my, my character. They knew my work ethic and the quality of, of the work that I did. And so I was back to work pretty quick. And so I'm very, very grateful uh, that that was how that shook out for me. But it showed me that it, it was important to, to get a side hustle, to invest in something, to figure it out. So I, at this point, I've got a brand new job. The income is coming back and I have this one rental. Well, I like the rental. It's been steady now for, boy, what would that be? Like eight years, almost 10 years? Closing on 10 years at this point. And rents had steadily gone up. Um, I kept paying that house down every month, and so it was doing exactly what it was supposed to. So I decided it's time to really get into real estate. While I work in my full-time job, uh, I would just do a deal on the side. And I wanted to do a flip. You, you see them on HGTV, right? And I mean, if those clouds could do it, I could do it, right? I mean, they make it look so easy. Uh, so I decided to do a flip. And my goal with my first flip was really just to break even. If I, my, my thought was, if I could just break even on this deal, it'd be free education, right? As long as I don't lose money, then it's all good. So, local realtor friend of mine, um, Andy Shepard, who actually I do a lot of business with now, uh, she brought me a deal. Um, this was a HUD house. So basically a foreclosure that the government was looking to sell. Um, I bought it and I bought it for $54,000. And we put about, I think $14,000 in it. And I forget the exact sales price. I'll look it up when we, when we, at the end of this video, when I go through the analysis. But I believe we sold that house for right around 80 uh, so we did well you know after all the bills and, and taxes and everything I made a profit which I wasn't expecting but it showed me that it worked you know I could do this and the model works and so at this point one rental one flip and we are off to the races um, okay I'll tell you one more I wasn't gonna tell you about the third deal but we'll do it real quick and then we're gonna take it home I took my profits from that property and I bought another HUD house. Um, and maybe I'll leave this as a cliffhanger for the next video because this, this third deal that I did, I still have today. It involves a lot of creative financing. This one was a good deal. I was finally sophisticated enough that I knew how to start structuring deals. So maybe we'll leave it for the next one. But that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's how I got started in real estate. So where am I today? Okay, where am I today? I have about 40 of my own rentals, um, 40 doors. Some of those are duplexes and triplexes. Um, and that's locally here in Fort Wayne. I have my real estate license now. Um, I'm part of a group that does apartment syndications. I work with Whitehaven Capital and we collectively own over 500 units in Phoenix. Um, man, and I've done, I mean, just about every little structure that you can. Um, lease options and land contracts and um, direct mail marketing. I, I mean, there's a lot I'm leaving off that list, but I've I, it's not that I've done it all. I still have a lot to learn, but I've done a lot. And so at this point, it's not that I don't have any regrets. I've had to learn a lot of hard lessons. I've had to learn how to balance my time to make sure my family's taken care of. 
Because I don't know that I would say I'm a workaholic, but I enjoy being productive and there are times when you have to learn to not necessarily be productive. Um, I also host the Fort Wayne Real Estate Investors Association. Um, I do that alongside my good buddy Adam Bextet, who uh, who's a great guy, super helpful with that. Uh, so I have a lot to be grateful for. And you know, if you just look at my 40 rentals, that means I have 40 streams of income. And my W-2, I'm still working my full-time job. I'm grateful to have that job. Um, it's it's a good fit, and I love the people over there. And, and so, you know, life is kind of good again. Um, it's it's proof that you can have kind of a, catastrophic's a big word, but you can have a big sentinel event in your life. And if you focus and gather yourself and pull good people around you, you can, you can get back to it. Please, if you haven't, drop a like, hit the subscribe button, but more importantly than that, please let me know what you want to learn about, what you want to hear, what works about this format, what doesn't. Um, I'd really, I, I really have a good time putting this together, so I hope you guys enjoy it. So the more feedback you can give me, the better I think we can make it. So, okay, I'm gonna go get some altitude. We're gonna practice some more wing overs and then we're out. Thanks for coming along. Oh, textbook. Finally getting his down. <laughs>